In this lecture, we'll provide a quick introduction to the concept of imitation learning, or in other words, learning from expert demonstrations, and we'll again use the package Crux. So for more formal information on imitation learning, there's a good lecture from Emma Brunskill's reinforcement learning courses at Stanford, um, where the lectures are available on YouTube. And so here, as we did before with the DBRL lecture, uh, we're going to use the swinging pendulum problem, um, which is an MDP that consists of a pole that is fixed at a single point, and actions are applied to attempt to balance uh, the pole upright using torque. And so in this notebook, we're going to learn from demonstrations. So first, we'll download these expert demonstrations, which are just trajectories that an expert played out, and we saved off some information. Um, and if you want to see how the, uh, the file is actually downloaded, you can unhide this code. Um, so we'll load those expert trajectories. Uh, we'll first evaluate some performance that we can later plot for how the expert performed, and then we'll reset the rewards. And here you'll see that the expert trajectories object itself is an experience replay buffer. Uh, and if you look at the data that's in this buffer, uh, it consists of uh, actions that were taken in specific states uh, by the expert, uh, what, what was the next state that was transitioned to, uh, the reward times, and some other information about the entire um, trajectory that an expert demonstrated for us. So in this problem, again, we're dealing with a continuous action space. So the actions uh, which correspond to that torque that's applied in the clockwise and counterclockwise directions, uh, which correspond to a negative and positive values, respectively. And so this continuing continuous action space is defined by a Gaussian distribution with mean zero and unit variance, or variance of one. And then actions are sampled from this policy, which is represented by a distribution. Uh, so if we look at the action space of our policy that we we've learned below, uh, we can see this is in fact a continuous space with those parameters for the Gaussian distribution listed here. Uh, for our state space, uh, we're using a continuous state space where the uh, it's a combination of the real valued angle theta of the pole and the angular velocity omega of the pole, or the, you know, how quickly is the angle changing. And so this continuous space uh, is represented as two independent Gaussian normal distributions uh, with mean zero and unit variance. And we can look at the state space of our MDP here. Again, it's a continuous space uh, with the parameters of our distribution. So as before, we'll use the uh, POMDP gym package, uh, which implements this pendulum MDP, uh, which we can call just to get this MDP object. So now we'll describe the concept called behavior cloning. So using supervised learning, what behavior cloning attempts to do is to learn a policy by mimicking actions provided by some teacher, or in our case, expert demonstrations, which means that we have a target that we want to learn, uh, just like supervised learning, which we get from the demonstrations themselves. So in our case, we use a continuous neural network policy, which is trained to match those actions from the demonstrations. And so for our policy network, uh, we use Flux to define the network itself, uh, we chain those together into a continuous network that we'll be able to sample from and uh, get an action uh, out of this policy. So as before, we can call the behavior cloning constructor, pass it in the type of policy we want here. It's that uh, policy network we just defined. Pass it in those expert demonstrations, so the data from these trajectories that were previously saved off from some expert. Uh, pass in the state space and some logging parameters. And then as always, we can call solve, given the solver and the MDP, and produce a policy. Here I just provide some code to show you how to save the policy and load it so you don't have to call solve every time if you don't want to. And what we can do with this policy now as before is uh, plot the performance. So here we have the performance of the uh, behavior cloning policy uh, over its training steps, which we can see pretty quickly just in a few thousand training steps uh, we start to match the expert uh, uh, undiscounted return here and meanings, meaning we're you know, mimicking the expert uh, based on those trajectories that were given to us. Um, we can also produce some animated GIF. And actually what you see here is not a static image. Uh, once it resets, you'll see that that's actually found a sweet spot because this is a continuous action space that it just perfectly balances the pole right there, giving some sweet uh, uh, torque value that really just looks like it's you know, stationary. And so what we can do a little bit further, uh, lastly, is kind of just inspect these actions. So what I have here is we call, um, we, we pass in some state to the policy to return some action here. 
Uh, the way I define the state is just using uh, the angle theta, which is bound to a slider, and the angular velocity, which is also bound to a slider. Uh, and then I just render this. And what we can do is we can see as we change the, the angle of the pole, we can just see what action up here, and it's also shown in the red arrow, uh, is output by the policy. Uh, and you can see these are continuous actions because these values are continuous, but also it shows up in how smooth the transition of this arrow is. And we can also tell, you know, what, how does the action change when our angular velocity changes too, uh, which ex helps with debugging, but also helps uh, with some intuition on what's going on in terms of each of these components of the state space and how it affects the actual action from the policy. And so that's it for this lecture. Um, here's a reference to one of the original uh, papers that introduced behavior cloning. And in the next lecture, we'll talk about black box validation. Uh, this is the concept of we have some black box system where we can only send in inputs and receive outputs. And how do we stress test this to find the most likely failures?